All right, so we're at the Silverlight Aviation booth here at Oshkosh 2024, and there is a brand new aircraft on the field. Abed, if you could explain, well, first your company, yes. and then what your new company offering is today. Right, so we are Silverlight Aviation based in uh, near Tampa, Florida, in Zephyr Hills, Florida. And we have been making gyroplanes. People know us for American Ranger 1 AR-1 gyroplane. Um, but I've been in airplanes, I fly airplanes, gyroplanes, strikes, designed all three and have manufactured all three. So this is uh, Recon, which is essentially a bigger version of uh, something called Apollo LSA that my old company used to do in uh, 2007 to 2012 time frame. In Europe, it's called Apollo Fox. It's our Hungarian partners who manufactured it. And we did some engineering work to make it compliant with the ASTM standard. And what has happened is, when I decided to bring it back, I wanted to redesign it and take away the sizing constraint, the baggage constraint, and allow bigger engines to go in there, like a 916 or a, or a Continental engine to go in there. So I redesigned it, stretched it out, made the cabin bigger, baggage compartment bigger, fuselage is longer, and I completely redesigned the, the tail. So, and uh, the wingspan is a little bit bigger as well. So when I redesigned it and sent the drawings back to them, they are still manufacturing the kit for us, and it comes here as a quick build kit, and people can buy it, they can come and build it with us under build assist, just like we did with the AR-1 Ranger gyroplane same thing they come and build with us complete it and we'll test fly it for them if they are not comfortable test flying it for a couple of hours so they are comfortable flying it so that's how we we are building this but basically it's a bigger version of the apollo lsa uh, and uh, apollo lsa of course is a derivative of from avid flyer dean wilson's design from the avid from avid. way back when yep way back when so this would be like a I don't know the size of like a four or something or no this, is, this is probably the size bigger than that yeah it's 46 inches elbow to elbow and it's 44 inches at the hips in the cabin and uh, the baggage compartment so holds uh, 100 pounds and I we sh uh, the weight and balance is done in such a way that you can get away with putting up to a continental engine in there and put the battery in the battery tray in the back and you can remain within CG limits. So does this also have an option of the folding wing and trailerable or? Uh, it's not an option, it, it is a folding wing. And how do you go about this? Is it similar to others or how? Yeah, it's the same as all the Avid flyers. Basically you take the turtle deck off, which is a quarter ton fasteners. Uh, you'll take the uh, balance weights off that are screwed on, there are two of them. And after doing that, you're gonna lock your stick forward with a bungee so it doesn't the the tail is down the elevator is down and then you're going to come here and you're going to take the spin out and that's the key right here the spin out and we have a slide hammer that actually hooks in there and as the pin comes out the slide hammer goes in and you can take that out put it in your pocket drop it on the ground and then you grab this here and you take the slide hammer out and you can walk yourself right here and then you're just going to swing it back and while you're swinging it back, about halfway, 45 degrees, you're going to put the flapper on all the way up. Flip, flip the flapper on. Up, yeah. <laughs> flip the flapper on all the way up, and essentially that's it. Okay, and I saw a tab over here on the tail. I assume Correct. is that to lock that, that, that in? That tab is to lock so it doesn't go hit this, and you can trailer it with, with a locking strut right here. Okay. So that works pretty well and this remains down when when the wing is folded another uh, caution you have to have while folding the wing is you need to start with half a fuel tank like seven gallons in each tank instead of 14 because the fuel will otherwise when you fold it the fuel will go to one direction and it'll come out from the cap which is vented so make sure you have half tanks before you right yes yeah, yeah. that's one thing you have to make sure that you have yeah so don't top it off after every flight then no yeah yeah if you want to fold it don't top it off right all right <laughs> so talk to us about the uh this obviously as you mentioned has the uh, 100 horsepower engine this Rotax. one has yes so this one has 100 horsepower engine um, you can put the 912 IS, the FADAC engine as well. You can also put uh, the 916 IS. Those are the engines we are targeting. 
but uh, if somebody wants a Continental like a 360, X360 or 340, we can do that as well. But we'll have to engineer the engine mounting mechanism. For so that. you've got enough room on the on the firewall, the yes. nose of it, to accommodate the weight. Correct. Yes. All right. So weight is not a problem. Making sure that the engine cooling is going to be correct. That's the engineering. If somebody wants a X360 or 340, that that I would have to design that. All right. And what is the um, talk to us about the uh, the takeoff speeds and cruise speeds of projected? Because this is yet. Yes. It has to be flown. Yes. So projected, we are targeting a speed of about for the standard tail dragger, not with the uh, with the 22 inch wheels, but tires, but with smaller tires and wheel pans. A tail dragger with 100 horsepower, 75 percent power, should ride be around 98 to 100 knots cruise, and uh, stall speed is in the 30s, 30, 32 to 38 knots, depending on your flaperon settings and uh, possibly lower, I have to test the Vortex generators, but generally Vortex generator will drop it down by three knots. Uh, and uh, the tri-gear version of this will cruise about three knots slower than the tail dragon. Okay, so you've got two wing tanks and I saw a small header tank, which is becoming yes. quite popular in many builds. Yeah. Is that about a gallon or so? Or? It's about 1.3 gallons, yes. Okay, and this particular engine is not fuel injected, but are you recommending anybody to everybody to use header tanks at this point yes we always did header tanks even in the apollo fox apollo lsa we did header tanks always yeah okay it's just a good good system um you have an accumulator tank that equalizes both sides and uh, you have a local reservoir right there and then when you do the return line for vapor lock pre prevention you can return it to the header tank and that's much easier than trying to go back up and uh, it's also much more effective because the gravity feed into the header tank pressurizes and va uh, takes the vapor away. And so do you vent at the cap? Yes. Uh, you vent at the cap, only at the cap. Correct. And then the, uh, the crossover line on the Rotax goes back to the header tank. Correct. Okay. Yes. Which is required, re suggested now for both carbureted and required for fuel injection. Oh, I think it's required. Yeah? Yeah, it's not a suggestion. Okay. If uh, there, there are people who don't do that but that's a mistake yeah you have to do that because if you're using car fuel especially uh, and you get you get like uh, read vapor pressure that's pretty high 13 to 15 psi you're gonna get you pretty much are guaranteed to get vapor lock as you climb higher in hot conditions so you all right so this is a kit obviously yes. and it comes as a as an advanced kit. Correct. So what is pretty much left to be done when you open the box? Yes. You're going to take inventory. Yes. And after that, what, what's the first thing you would suggest to start on? So really you're going to get not a box, but actually a trailer. And it is going to have the fuselage on it um, and it's covered already. And the wings are already covered. So what you're doing from there is a lot of control system assembly, a lot of the fuel system assembly, engine mounting, wiring harness which is quite a lot of work but a wiring harness uh, all the landing gear installation tail wheel or nose gear assembly all that stuff you have to do but it's covered already so it's a quick build so this is a i would want to call this a super advanced yeah quick so build. it's basically about 1105 tasks and you're going to do about 570 tasks out of that so the tasks are not necessarily meaning that you're spending time so you, you're the task-based thing, you're doing more 51% of the tasks, even more than 51%, 52% of the tasks. But doesn't mean you have to do covering. Covering is, you know, covering an aileron or covering a tail, for example, is one task. And you can spend two days on it. Or you can saw the landing light, it's one task, and you can spend one hour on it. So, you know. So basically we have done it to make sure that the tasks are, majority of the tasks are done um, by the builder, but um, the, the work of chemicals and all this stuff is already done for you. Okay, so essentially what, you said half the task, what would be the, the primary task after getting it off the trailer, as you say? Uh, assemblies, Ma mainly a lot of assembly, a very little fabrication, but just enough. Uh, to meet the requirements, 20% fabrication. So
So you're going to be building some small brackets, some control system brackets, some firewall firewall and firewall forward stuff. You're going to be building some brackets and stuff, but um, mainly you're doing assembly. Okay. Cables, you're going to be building the control circuits, so you're going to be building cables and stuff like that and routing them through. So those are the assembly tasks. But those are uh, easier than, let's say, learning the whole fabric system and getting in with chemicals, respirators and all that, uh, painting. That's all, you know, you don't, you're not, generally most people don't do the painting themselves anyway. They take it to a paint shop. But um, a lot of people do covering and the covering, uh, you know, many of the covering, unless you're using steward systems or something, uh, a lot of the covering is cancerous chemicals. So we're trying to take that away. All right, I'm gonna pop in here real quick to talk about our sponsors. As you know, I can't do this all on my own. We got to have somebody to help fuel that truck. We try really hard to work with uh, sponsors that provide a good service and a good quality product. So let's talk about those guys right now. Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com, the premier provider of glass panel avionics systems for experimental and light sport aircraft. Wide Open Door Company at WideOpenDoorCo.com, your premier destination for high quality doors, including aircraft hangar doors. Warp Drive Propellers at WarpDriveInc.com, providing quality, solid carbon fiber propellers for many light sport and experimental aircraft. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for new videos and easy to navigate playlists and so much more. Speaking of fueling that truck, if you guys wanna join us on our Patreon page, become patrons of this channel, just search on Patreon for Experimental Aircraft Channel, sign up at several different levels, so check that out. All right, Ivan, so uh, having you sitting here just to show scale and uh, the headroom, yeah. looks like you got plenty of headroom to clear headsets and right. so forth. I am, uh, I'm pretty average, 5'9", so um, you can kind of see. And, uh, but I've had people in here six foot two and they had still had good headroom left over. Yep, so it's wide and a bit tall. Right, so elbow to elbow, it's 46 and a half inches right here. But right here at the hip to hip, you're looking at about 44, 0.1 inches, 44 inches. Okay, and is there any adjustment in the seat or just be a thicker cushion? No, it's a, no adjustment. It's a welded welded seat okay. frame and the seat sits on it. Uh, we do have an option that I'm planning to offer for the adjustable, um, you know, adjustable pedals, but seats remain right there. Yeah. Okay. Easier, easier to do uh, the arms and CG, but also the, the way it's manufactured, the seat frame is stationary. All right, so the most important part, th th this is, it's hard to compare it to others because this, again, is a super advanced quick build kit, right? Yeah. Basically doing almost every last task you could possibly do and Correct. still allow you as the builder yes. to build it. Yes, um, but remember, as they say, the last 10% seems to take 50% of the time. 90% <laughs> so, done, 90% to go. Exactly, right? I mean, everybody who has built an airplane, they know that. Um, and that is why we have already engineered, for example, you can build the wiring harness, but if you do it with us, that's a lot of tasks because there's a lot of wiring going on, especially if you do something like a Garmin stack. But we have already engineered that. If you come and build with us, you will participate in that, you will build it, we will show you how to use the tools. Uh, so a lot of tasks get knocked out, you doing those things and learning wiring and avionics and engine mounting and stuff. Those are the things that are tricky for a lot of users to get right. And sure. uh, with the builder assist, we make that nine, you know, the last 10% takes 50% of the time. I, we make that easier you know, because it's already engineered out and you are just following what we do, we are already done and you're following and doing exactly that. Okay, and just so everybody knows, this particular plane and design has not flown yet. The yes. FAA, unfortunately, is being a government entity and dragging their feet <laughs> on getting Abed his uh, approval on this. Yeah. But uh, Abed has designed the whole fleet of the Silverlight uh, aircraft. Yeah, as and, a uh, yeah my, I started with uh, Apollo aircraft before um, and did the Apollo LSA, uh, did the trikes, a lot of trikes. Um, then 
yeah. civil light aviation. I also worked at Sea Ray, so Sea Ray amphibian airplane, their certification and stuff and production line setup. That was so this, this is not your first design. No, no, no. <laughs> so after this gets approved by FAA, you're obviously going to go through flight testing and so forth. And after that, you'll we'll get together again, right. and uh, we'll be able to share some in-flight stuff. But what uh, do you perceive the lead time to be on the kits? So right now, the lead time on the kit to be delivered in uh, Florida is four months. Okay, we already have a couple of kits in production. So if uh, somebody is wanting to order and they know their paint paint scheme, they can get that, and I can get that over. It's probably four months for the kit to come here. Then they come over for about uh, like three to four weeks, build it with us, and the last finishing probably six months to flying, essentially. Okay, and what is the price point projected to be? So uh, with the builder's assist, let's say you're starting at 120, and you could go all the way to 145 with a 916 engine in it. And if you want to just buy the kit, what is the kit price? The kit price, uh, 80,000, yeah. But that's already covered, so it's a quick build. Very so, so what at the eighty thousand kit price? What is missing? Uh, what is missing is you assembling, essentially, and doing all those things that we. What is oh, what is missing? As in, they will at eighty thousand kit price, they're gonna have to buy the engine, essentially. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, is it uh, where can people get in touch with you or follow you on social to see when this will be, in fact, ready and uh, available? Correct. Hopefully, within uh, two weeks after Oshkosh, we will have uh, we'll be flying this. And as soon as we start flying it, I'm going to make the pages for on the website go live for the airplane. Right now, you can only see the gyroplane. As soon as I start airworthiness and I start flying, the pages will go live and people can see it there. But uh, so, www.civilightaviation.com and uh, there will be an airplane section showing up there.